This is a 2001 Lamborghini Diablo GTR, and it's insane. The Diablo was Lamborghini's supercar throughout the 1990s, and this is the ultimate version of it, with only a handful made and a value of well over a million dollars. And today, I'm going to review it. Before I get started, be sure to check out Cars and Bids, which is my enthusiast car auction website for cool cars from the modern era, now with free listings. You can list your car for free and auction it on Cars and Bids. And we've had some great sales recently, including this beautiful B8 Audi S4 in Nagaro Blue, which sold for $38,500, this fantastic Tesla Roadster, which sold for more than $86,000, and this wonderful Lexus L. LS430 Ultra Luxury, which brought over $30,000. If you're looking to buy or sell a cool enthusiast car from the modern era, the 1980s and up, Cars and Bids is the place to do it. Check it out at carsandbids.com. I've borrowed this Diablo GTR from Specialty Car Collection, which is a dealership here in Los Angeles that specializes in special cars. Specialty Car Collection has a fantastic inventory of luxury and exotic cars, very cool and exciting vehicles, but the crown jewel, at least right now, is this Diablo GTR. You can check it out on Specialty Car Collection's website by clicking the link in the description below. So let's talk Diablo GTR. Like I said, the Diablo was Lamborghini's supercar throughout the 1990s, and the GTR was the ultimate version, a race car model with almost 600 horsepower and insanely limited production. And frankly, it's just wild. And today, I'm going to show it to you. First, I'll take you on a thorough tour of the Diablo GTR and show you all of its quirks and features. Then I'm going to drive it. I'll get it out on the road and drive it, and then I'll give it a Doug score. All right, time for the quirks and features, the Diablo GTR. There are quite a few quirks and features to this car, starting right off the bat with the door, where there's some crazy stuff. Probably the most unusual quirk out here is this duct. You can see right here by the mirror, a duct that seems to be coming from the mirror to the interior of the car. So what exactly is that about? Well, this is a race car, and that means they've removed the climate control system, the air conditioning, the heat, it's all gone. And it can get pretty hot inside the interior as a result. So this duct brings fresh air from the outside into the interior while you're moving. And it does that by clamping on to the rear view mirror. There's a little separation between the two mirror posts. All Diablos have that. The GTR capitalizes on it by sticking a duct inside that separation to get the air and then funnel it into the interior. You can see on the inside, it actually looks like a climate control vent, like an air conditioning vent a normal car would have. Have, except it's hooked up to a duct going through the window and then through the mirror to bring fresh air into the car. That's pretty crazy. And speaking of this window, you might be wondering why the duct goes through it, and that's because it's fixed in place. This is common in race cars to save weight. They don't have a glass window that rolls down like you might have for comfort and convenience in a normal car. Instead, it's a lightweight plexiglass window that doesn't roll down, and in fact, the only part that opens is this little piece here slides open, and that's the only only other ventilation you can get in this interior. So you have this tiny window opening for ventilation, or you can use your duct that goes through the mirror in the window. Pretty crazy stuff. And by the way, speaking of the windows in this car, in the back window, you can especially see that it's this lightweight plexiglass and it's just sort of bolted to the car. It doesn't look that good, but this is a race car and looking good is secondary to functionality and saving weight with these lightweight windows. Now, the other funny thing with the door in this car is how you get inside. In order to pop open the door, you press this little pad with the keyhole. That unlatches the door, and then you can pull on this handle part, and then the door opens right up. And you can see it is a scissor door, looks very cool, very exotic, and that's shared with the standard Diablo. And it looks just like an exotic car should with these exotic opening doors that look cool. The funny part of this door handle situation is you push the keyhole in order to unlatch the door, but this car has no keys. It's a race car. It doesn't come with keys, but there's a keyhole anyway, because they just 
just use that part from the standard Diablo, and it's kind of funny to see it there. A keyhole you can never lock. But anyway, next with the doors open, we climb inside the Diablo GTR, which is easier said than done because of the roll cage. You can see part of it here making this X shape over the door opening, which makes it tremendously difficult to get inside the car. Roll cages like this are mandated safety equipment for race cars, but they certainly make it hard to get in and out. Take a look at me trying to climb inside. Once you're inside, you can see just how basic this interior is. You look around and you see basically nothing. For instance, on the dashboard, there's no climate vents pointing at the cabin. Like I said, they've removed all the climate control systems, so no vents at all. You also have no carpeting in here. You don't have nice floor mats or leather trimmed floors with piping like some Italian exotics did back in this era. This thing is pure race car, totally stripped out and no luxuries like carpeting. And indeed, all the luxuries are gone, but so are all of the convenience items. For instance, there's no glove box in this interior. Over on the side of the dashboard, you can see no glove box. In fact, there's no storage in here at all. Race cars don't really need interior storage. You're not trying to like stick an owner's manual somewhere or some paperwork. And so this car has none of that. You also have no ashtray or cigarette lighter in here like you do in a standard Diablo in the center and other center storage panels. They've all been removed. It's all gone, basic and stripped out to only the necessities to save weight for a race car. So what do you have in here? The main thing you see when you climb inside in the center is just a few switches and buttons in here. These are the only controls necessary to operate this as a race car. You can see they're rather large and sort of rubbery to make it easier to press while you're wearing gloves like you might when you're in a race. And frankly, these controls are tremendously simple. You can see at the bottom right, you have your headlights, low beams, high beams, the rear fog light, all your lighting is down there. At the top, this row of buttons is your wipers. You can see wiper one, wiper two, which I imagine is a speed control. And then you also have a window washer, which could come in handy on the racetrack. And you also do have turn signals in this car, left and right. This little switch here controls your turn signals, which might come in handy on the racetrack. If you're signaling that you're going into a pit lane or coming out of a pit lane, you may want your signals, so they included them in here. But the other items in this center control area are primarily focused on turning on the car. The one at the top, this little lever, is a battery switch. You turn that to the right, and then the battery is activated. The electronics are connected, and that's your first step in starting up the car. The second step is to lift up this little red cover over this switch. This is your ignition switch. And you lift up the red cover almost like you're firing a missile. It's pretty cool. But anyway, you lift that up, and you push it forward, and then the car's ignition is on. And then you press this black button here marked simply Run, and that starts up the engine. And and it gets running, and then you've turned on the car. Your last control in here is inside this little red cup. There's a button that is for your fire suppression system. This car has the plumbing for a fire extinguisher system inside the car. So if you're driving along on the racetrack and a fire starts, or if you crash and you're worried about fuel spill and a fire start, you press that button, and then the fire extinguisher system will spray like foam or some sort of fire retardant to make sure the fire doesn't take hold and spread. And you can see directly directly behind the driver's seat, that silver canister is the fire extinguisher for this car. You can see the lines running from that canister for the fire extinguisher plumbing. I'm not sure if it's still operant, but in theory, that's where that foam is kept. And when you press the red button, it will spray and kill any chance of having a big fire. Now, the other thing you can see here in this center area that you might be surprised to see is a screen. There's like a large touchscreen situation here. That is hooked up to a backup camera, which you can see around the back of the car. Right here, here's your backup camera, and it feeds to the screen. Now, it's currently not hooked up. That's why it's not on right now. But it has been installed, and it can be operant. And frankly, it's kind of important in this car because you don't have a rear window. You look behind the seats, and you can see no rear window here. Instead, just a large carbon fiber panel and some more of your roll cage. So visibility isn't exactly great in this car. You pretty much only have your exterior side mirrors, no rear window to look back. 
And by the way, speaking of that carbon fiber panel behind the seats, it is a lot thinner than what you had in the standard Diablo road car. They do that, once again, to save weight, but the result is that you get a lot of the engine heat kind of filtering into the interior, and it makes it pretty hot in this car, which helps explain why you need those ducts coming from the mirrors through the windows and into the car to provide a little ventilation and cooling in this interior. Now, speaking of that cooling and ventilation and the whole climate control situation, it is worth pointing out that you do have two vents at the top of the dashboard, you can see them here, and they can be used as a window defogger, which in theory could be important if you're racing. In certain conditions, it could get foggy, and so you can turn on those vents and defog the window to help you keep driving as fast as possible. Now, also worth pointing out with this dashboard, you can see it's all Alcantara, which has become a very common material in a lot of cars these days, but back in the late 90s, early 2000s, it really wasn't. Regular Diablos pretty much exclusively used leather for the most part, and so seeing Alcantara is unusual, but it had some racing benefits. For one thing, it's lighter than leather, and it also doesn't glare as much onto the window, which can be helpful if you're driving in certain circumstances. You just want to be focused on the road ahead, not dealing with glare from your leather dashboard. Now, next up, another interesting item worth noting about this interior is it has a passenger seat. You can see I'm sitting in it. It has a passenger seat, which isn't really all that notable, except for the fact that these cars didn't have a passenger seat. When the Diablo GTR was sold new, it came only with a driver's seat. That's all you need on the racetrack. And the passenger seat was removed compared to a standard Diablo in order to save weight. But the previous owner of this car put the passenger seat back in because he wanted it to be more usable on a day-to-day -day basis. And that is notable because this Diablo GTR is one of only a handful that actually has a VIN. You can see it right here in the engine bay, a true VIN. VIN. Most race cars don't have that. Instead, they have some sort of serial number. They don't ever need to be registered, so a VIN isn't necessary. But this Diablo GTR was titled and registered for road use and driven by its prior owner on the road. And that's true for only a few Diablo GTRs. <laughs> How cool would it be to drive this thing along? A standard Diablo isn't badass enough for you. You gotta go for the ultra limited production lightweight race car version and put a license plate on it. But anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself going into the engine compartment because there's still a few interesting quirks and features to cover in this interior. Like, for example, the plaque indicating how special this car is. It's mounted in the interior, but facing out through the rear window. You can see it here. A lot of special cars have a plaque like in the dashboard telling the occupants how special it is. But in this car, it tells bystanders how special it is. People who approach it on the street will then know that only 30 of these were built. And indeed, this is number 28 of 30, only 30 D Diablo GTRs manufactured. But anyway, next up, another interesting item in this interior, the seats are wider than what you have in a standard Diablo, which makes sense. These are racing seats with a racing harness. They have heavy bolstering to keep you in place on the racetrack, and so they're wider than like a standard leather seat in the Diablo. As a result of that, Lamborghini had to make the center console narrower than what you see in a standard Diablo. So you can see the dashboard and like the first part of the center console is all kind of one piece, and then there's a second carbon fiber piece that's smaller, that doesn't really fit in with that first part, and that's to make it narrower to fit these seats, and so that center console is indeed narrower as a result. Now, one thing that wasn't changed in this center console is the transmission. You can see five-speed manual transmission in the Diablo GTR with a dogleg first gear. So first is down and to the left, and then second is up and in the middle, which is kind of unusual, but that's how the Diablos were, and that's how the Diablo GTR was as well. Now, one other item worth noting in this interior is the steering wheel. You can see very basic, no airbag here, no horn, no volume control buttons, just a simple Momo steering wheel, and it detaches. The theory here is it makes it easier to get in and out if you pull the steering wheel off, and then you can climb out more easily, but that's not actually true in practice. It is still tremendously difficult to get out of this car, as I shall now demonstrate. <laughs> But 
anyway, next we move outside the Diablo GTR, where there are quite a few amazing features and quirks on this car. And probably my very favorite exterior revision compared to a standard Diablo is this air intake. It's mounted directly behind the passenger compartment on the roof, a roof scoop to bring air into the engine, and that is just plain cool. It's also massive, even by roof scoop standards, incredibly cool. The only drawback is you can't really hear it inside the car because you can't open the windows. So the roof scoop is there sucking in air. You just have to believe that while you're driving along. And as you might imagine, there are quite a few more changes than that on the outside of the Diablo GTR compared to the standard Diablo. One is wider front fenders. As you can see, they're a little wider and that gives them room to have this little cooling duct integrated into the fenders, I guess for brake cooling or maybe for aero. And that is a pretty cool touch on the GTR. And since we're talking changes compared to a regular Diablo on the GTR, let's talk rear end where you have an enormous amount of revisions and upgrades, the most noticeable of which is definitely the wing. You can see carbon fiber wing, absolutely massive, spans the entire width of the car, completely huge and insane. And it's actually bolted directly to the chassis. You open up the engine compartment and you can see where the wing is attached. It's not just stuck on bodywork for show like it is in some cars, stuck directly on the chassis so it can be used to provide real downforce while you're racing. And there are a lot of other upgrades to the back as well. For one, in the rear grill, you can see there's a little circle carved out and you have this little metal piece sticking out. That is for the air jack system in this car. When you're driving a race car and you come in for a pit stop, you don't have time to like individually jack up each wheel and wait for the jack to get the car lifted. Instead, you got to do it fast. So you can connect like a compressed air hose to this spot here. It will send air to the jacks and instantly get the car up off the ground so you can quickly change the tires. And you can actually see the air jacks mounted down here underneath the car. Those things would shoot up and send the car up so that the tires can be quickly changed using this air jack system. And there are more changes worth noting back here. For one thing, there's no rear bumper, as you can see. You just have some bodywork and then the exhaust hangs down below, no bumper. That is an important distinction compared to a standard Diablo because the rear of this car is relatively similar, but regular Diablos have a bumper kind of sticking out here below the license plate, obviously for regulatory compliance and for bumping into things, but you don't need a bumper in a race car. There are no regulations and it just adds to weight. So they take it out and that changes the look of the back of this Diablo. You can also see right below where the rear bumper would be, this exhaust, absolutely massive center exit exhaust, completely huge and no cats because it's a race car and you don't need to comply with any emission regulations. So this is just a V12 that breathes. <laughs> take a listen. And next up on the subject of the changes made to this Diablo GTR to turn it into the race car, you can see on the side, the fuel doors, a little unorthodox. For one thing, you have two of them and there's also no like fuel door. You don't really need it on the racetrack. You just stick a fuel hose in there and get to filling it up as quickly as you can. Now you have two there because one is a filler and one is a vent, I guess, to combat pressure or whatever. So you're filling it in one of these holes and the vent is the other one, which is somewhat standard on race cars, especially on race cars with a fuel cell like this. You don't have a standard fuel tank. Instead, you have a fuel cell, lighter weight like a lot of race cars do, including the Diablo GTR. But anyway, next up, another race car touch for the Diablo GTR, the wheels. You can see here these black Speedline wheels, very cool looking. These were on all the Diablo GTRs and they are center lock wheels. So you don't have individual lug nuts you have to unscrew, which can take a while in a pit stop. Instead, you just have one center lock you take out and you can quickly replace the wheel and tire. These center lock wheels have become standard even on road cars today. It's kind of a cool sports car thing. But back in the Diablo GTRs era, it was only on race cars, including this one. By the way, these wheels are also magnesium in order to save weight, which is a pretty cool touch for this car. And by the way, speaking of the wheels for the Diablo GTR, you can see under the back wheel, you got a chalk there. And that's because this car doesn't have a parking brake. You didn't see a parking brake lever inside. It doesn't have one to save weight. No parking brake, just use the chalk instead. 
instead. But probably my very favorite race car upgrade to the Diablo GTR came to the brake lights. You have the standard brake lights on the regular Diablo. The GTR uses those. I think they were also used on city buses and various other vehicles, pretty generic taillights. But the funny part is the third brake light, which was here, but now it's not. They took out the third brake light and replaced it with a body colored panel instead. I guess Lambo figured it wasn't worth the extra wiring, the extra weight. Of course, it's not regulated on a racetrack to have a third brake light and nobody can see it anyway because of the massive rear wing. So they replaced the third brake light with this body colored panel as if they were just trying to remove as much road car stuff as possible, even though this undoubtedly doesn't actually save any weight. Just kind of funny to see. But anyway, another race car touch on the outside of this car is the side skirts, which you can see are carbon fiber. Standard Diablos don't have this. This car does. And you also have a carbon fiber front lip spoiler, as you can see here. Again, all carbon fiber on this lower part of the vehicle, front and on the sides. So I guess Lamborghini does this for aerodynamic purposes. These panels being positioned this way helps channel air best for best possible downforce. And so it improves the airflow in this car. Kind of a cool upgrade over the standard Diablo. And speaking of airflow, it's important to point out that this Diablo has lost its cargo space in the name of airflow. In a normal Diablo, you open up this front panel and it's a trunk. In this Diablo, you open up this front panel by undoing these pins here. You can see, you kind of pull this one out and then you pull this other one out and then you can open up the front panel. Very easy, very lightweight. And you discover there is a large piece in here where your cargo compartment would be. And that is an airflow channel. You can see that piece takes air that comes into the front bumper area, sends it through what would be the front trunk in this giant piece mounted in the trunk, and then it sends it out the top of the front trunk lid. In a normal Diablo, there's no hole here, but in this one there is to improve aerodynamics. So you have this front air channel taking up what should be your cargo area. Now, another upgrade on the outside of the GTR up front, compared to a standard Diablo, you have a little button and a switch mounted on the front fender. Right here on the driver's side front fender, there's a switch and a button, which seems a little bit odd, but they have a very important purpose. The switch controls the battery, the main battery to this car, and the button controls the fire suppression system. So if the car has an accident while it's racing and it's on fire and the driver is unconscious, so they can't activate the fire suppression system or turn off the car, a first responder can come up and do that from the outside without having to reach in and fumble around with the buttons. It's very simple on this front fender. This is a relatively common feature in race cars and the Diablo GTR has it too. But despite all of the upgrades and revisions and improvements made to the Diablo to turn it into a race car, it still has Nissan 300ZX headlights. This was a truth about later model Diablos with exposed headlights. They came straight from the 1990s Nissan 300ZX. Lamborghini saw them, they fit, and so they used them. And this one is particularly special because most Diablo models have a little painted lip over the upper part of the headlight, which says Nissan. They wanted to conceal that, so they tacked on a little piece. But this particular Diablo has its painted lip out for refinishing at the moment. And so you can clearly see the headlights do indeed say Nissan because they came straight out of the Z32 300ZX. And then they were mounted on the one of 30 ultra limited Diablo GTR. Same headlights. <laughs> But anyway, next we move on to maybe the coolest part about the entire Diablo GTR, and that would be the engine. But first, let's talk engine cover and accessing the engine. To open the engine cover and back here, it's the same as those fasteners up front for the trunk like I showed you. So you have a little loop, you kind of flip it over, and then you pull up on the fastener, and that side is done. Then you go over to the other side, do the same thing, and then the engine cover can be open. Now, before I open the engine compartment, one interesting thing back here, you can see instead of a rear window, you have a vent. This is for heat dissipation coming off the engine. Like I said, they removed the rear window in this car, but you still do have a panel here to extract heat. But anyway, since these fasteners are open, we can now open up the engine compartment, lift it up, and reveal the engine of the Diablo GTR. But before we take a look at that, on the inside of the engine compartment lid, you can see it's carbon fiber. And indeed, one change made to the GTR over the standard Diablo is carbon fiber body 
body panels all throughout the car in order to save weight. Now, they didn't change the doors of the roof. They kept those from the standard Diablo, but everything else went carbon fiber, which was a huge deal in 2001 to create carbon fiber body panels, but that's what they did. But anyway, next, move on to the engine, and you can see it here. Six liter V12, and absolutely beautiful. A truly gorgeous engine to behold, an amazing sight, absolutely fantastic to see it all laid out right in front of you. It is beautiful. Now, a few things to point out here. For one, you can see the roof scoop mounted on top of the engine, also finished in carbon fiber, and you can see how it pulls air from the top, the roof, and into the engine, and that is a very cool sight here. But just generally, this engine is so, so beautiful. Now, as for power, this car had 590 horsepower. Still a strong figure today, and it was amazing 20 years ago. And it made this the king of the Diablos. The Diablo VT, that was the most common one throughout the 90s, that had 530 horsepower. The Diablo 6.0, which was sort of the last of the last production models, that had 550 horsepower. The Diablo GT, which was like the track-focused one on which this car is based, that had 575 horsepower. So this, at 590, it stood above them all. And maybe more importantly, all of the weight reduction really did serve a purpose. This car weighs less than 3,000 pounds. So just under 600 horsepower and just under 3,000 pounds. Pretty impressive numbers for the Diablo GTR. Now, also under the hood, you can see the one place where they prioritized beauty over function, and that would be this plaque that says 6.0 V12 GTR. Obviously, they could remove that. I'm sure it adds a little weight and a little cost, but it is very cool, so they kept it on to celebrate what this powertrain is. And of course, beyond all the changes I've already showed you, the Diablo GTR also had a lot of other upgrades under the surface compared to a regular Diablo to make it more race ready. Like, for example, stiffer suspension, and it's also lowered to lower its center of gravity and to give it better handling on the racetrack. It also had extra heat exchangers for better cooling in this powertrain, since it would be doing high performance, high speed laps constantly. It needed some improved cooling, and it also had a fuel cell instead of a fuel tank, like I mentioned before, better brakes. There were a lot of upgrades to really turn this into a race car. And so you might be wondering, did this ever race? Was it ever actually used as a race car? And the answer is, well, not really. Lamborghini created this simply to compete in its own one vehicle race series called the Lamborghini Super Trophy or Super Trofeo, which continues to this day as a one make one vehicle race series. So Diablo GTR models raced each other in that series, but they never saw much competition outside that. This particular car raced in at least one race, maybe a handful more, but not much real performance race car action from this or basically basically any Diablo GTR. They were race cars, but sort of without a race series except for their own. And indeed, after this car's short time in competition, like I said before, it was mainly used as a street car. <laughs> by a prior owner, which is just really cool. And so those are the quirks and features of the Lamborghini Diablo GTR. Now it's time to get it out on the road and see how it drives. <laughs> Oh my god. All right, driving the Diablo GTR. <laughs> this is down Sunset Boulevard in Los Angeles in Hollywood here. This is absolutely wild. I gotta be honest, I've driven quite a few race cars, including recently I've driven a few. And first thing that hits me is, <laughs> as ridiculous as this is to say, this is actually more comfortable than I was expecting. A lot of times when you're sitting in these cars, because of the positioning of the roll cage and the, uh, the race seat, you're, as a tall person, I'm like this up against the, the roof. It's just an, a, a disaster. Not the case in this car. It's actually not so bad. Um, and I have enough space for my feet and for my body, and I'm kind of surprised. Uh, this isn't so bad in here. That makes the car a little bit more appealing. Now, it is hot, just like all race cars are. None of these cars really have a climate control system. This car has those little tubes on the sides of the windows, the doors, as I showed you. And obviously, the plexiglass window slides open a little bit, as I also showed you. But uh, <laughs> it's not much, especially when you're sitting stopped, because all of that is powered by moving air. And so it's a little bit of a challenge. One very interesting thing I noticed right away in this car is the clutch is surprisingly easy. Um, 
Another hallmark of race cars, manual transmission race cars that I've driven, that very heavy clutches, very difficult to drive. Um, not the case with this car. It actually is nice and uh, smooth, getting it into gear and going. It's pretty cool. Man, the sound is so cool. There's, they've really removed a lot of the uh, partition between the driver and the powertrain in this car. That was one of the things the GTR had. And so you really hear it. I mean, it's right there behind you in a way you don't get in other Diablo models. Oh, this is so cool. Now, one hallmark of race cars, including this car, is it's loud in here and it's rough in here. It's, it is a stiff suspension, obviously that's the point. You're trying to go around a racetrack as fast as possible. You don't need to have like suspension compliance for potholes. They never figured anybody would be driving this thing down the street in Beverly Hills. <laughs> It's actually surprising me sitting in this car. It doesn't feel quite as compromised as I was expecting. Now, it's difficult to get in. You got to do the whole harness thing. Like I said, it's hot. It's rough in here. But, like, it's drivable. Oh, that sound is great. You got a nice gated shifter. <laughs> yeah, it is a rough, rough ride. But that's, that's how race cars are. You just got to live with that. I mean, if you wanted a more compliant ride, go get a regular Diablo. You won't be as cool. Now, visibility is, of course, a bit of a disaster. The mirrors are large. I think they're probably the same ones in the standard Diablo, but I don't have a back window there, as you can see. Not that it matters much, because in the regular Diablo, you can't see much out that window, but at least you can see something. In this car, you're just kind of hoping. I love the gated shifter, of course. I love how it feels. There's nothing like a gated shifter in any car, but especially one of the V12. How cool is that? It revs very quickly and easily, which is actually a pretty cool thing. You know, this car is older. You kind of wonder, is it going to work right? Is it going to feel decent to drive? The answer is, yeah. It actually is smoother than I thought. Like, the whole experience is better than I expected. This car is more drivable than you might think. Sitting here at a stoplight, the car is pretty rough, as you might expect. Like a race car, they take out all of the sound deadening. They take out everything to make it comfortable and compliant. So you sit here and you feel kind of some rumbling. You hear the powertrain. You don't hear a lot of what's going on outside because there's a lot of noises inside this car. Even still, it's a little bit less insane rumbly in here than I was expecting that it would be. Um, it's not as bad as like a regular road car, Countach, frankly, but it's still louder than most cars, including regular Diablos. Man, what a wild thing. Here it goes. <laughs> just sounds so amazing, and you feel it vibrate. The car gets so angry at high revs. It's a, such an amazing sound. Oh, that is so cool. <laughs> That is one of the best sounding cars. That is incredible. The powertrain sound is so good. Oh my God. And you just feel it so much. There's so much like raw feeling in this car. It is crazy. That's one of the coolest things about race cars. You There's no sound ending. You're just one with the car. But the problem is usually the car is so compromised that you're just like, I forget about this. I don't, I don't care to be, I'm tired. This car, I don't really feel like that. Now you got a fuel smell in here. You have, a, you have a, a lot of noise in here. Like, that's what race cars are. They're meant for people who are professional drivers to go do something, not for people to drive it around. Wow, this is one of the coolest car experiences I've had in a while. I've spent a lot of time in recent videos driving new cars, and so they don't feel like this. This car is absolutely wildly, incredibly cool and insane. <laughs> It's, and it's so, uh, it's just so drivable for what it is. And I love revving it a little bit, either on a downshift or to get going in a stoplight, and you just hear that V12. This has got to be one of the latest model, latest production cars that still sounds like an old school V12 Italian supercar. This has kind of a Mura type vibe to it, it really does. And so that's the Lamborghini Diablo GTR. This is a truly special and exciting car with an ultimate race car focus. Nothing about this vehicle is intended to be comfortable or luxurious or even reasonable in the slightest. And that is what makes this car so cool. Anyway, now it's time to give the Diablo GTR a Doug score. 
And the Doug score is here, 59 out of 100, which places the Diablo GTR here against some other race car for the road sort of vehicles. The Diablo GTR actually ends up behind the regular road car Diablo 6.0. While the GTR wins in the weekend categories, it gets destroyed in daily categories because it's just so laughably impractical, but that's part of the charm. Truthfully, the Diablo GTR is awesome, an amazing car with an amazing sound and an amazing look, and I'm thrilled I had the chance to spend the day with one. 